Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time. It is time. It's crunch time. Let's go, baby. Uh, Jeff I. Freddy, Booner, the pregame duo. Yeah, we're starting a podcast. It's the called squad. Crunch Time with Jeff I. Freddy and Booner. And we're going to be covering everything. Uh, and why not start today, Booner, when the Lions win a playoff game yesterday? First time since 1991 92. And we're going to have Lucas Klotz joining. We're going to have the ball nowhere popping in in a second here. Uh, but I'm fired up. This is the debut, debut episode of the new podcast. How you feeling? How you feeling, Booner? Hey, I feel great. I went to bed at like 6 a.m. last night after a huge win. Biggest. I, th- this was the biggest Detroit Lions win in our lifetime. Oh, yeah. oh, Going yeah. to bed at 6 a.m. I woke up. I slept a little. I know you had to get up for the, the morning show. But, hey, crunch time, first of all. The Booner path. In Hollywood, the people's champ in Hollywood, combining forces. I don't, I don't think the people are ready for, for this whole thing that we have going on here. And we're gonna have people coming in all the. Hey, this is gonna be. Whew, I can't wait. It. Let's I'm go. I'm excited. Baby. Me, me, and me and you, obviously, me and Boone are great friends off camera, but this, the yeah. chemistry's already there. Uh, we argue all the time, which is important for if you're gonna do things like we'll this. Go, I'll go at your head. Yeah. Some people well, won't. I will. Yeah, well, it, and I, I like that. I do. I, I like I like getting better. I did it for a while with Adam. Booner, you're my guy, and we're going to do some great things on this channel. We will. Oh, yeah. Um, and I will say this, too. Michael Gentry is going to be helping out a lot, and he's going to be on camera with us as well as off camera. So Michael Gentry, he's a part of the team. Uh, Lucas Klotz, the ball knower, he'll be popping in and out. He'll be doing some content with us. And, of course, the rest of the guys at Woodward Sports will be uh, coming on as well. So it, it doesn't mean we're branching off. It, we're just we're doing our own thing, and I can't wait to do it. So, so let's start. extra content. We, we love yeah. to make content. We love to talk sports. We get a certain amount of hours a week to do it and, and to have a like a, another opportunity to do it, like m- just talk more and with different people. And especially we've done shows together for two years now. We've just yeah. never had a show together. It, right. I think the people I think the people wanted it. The people's champ in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Maybe. You got to give go. the people what they want. Let's go. You uh, do. Let, let's start it off, man. I mean, last night, you guys were at the watch party uh, at the studio, uh, and I watched the game with my dad. I was with my dad. I was with Neil Rule was supposed to be there. We were at Cicerelli Sticks Place, uh, his new He bar. did not show up. He didn't show up. He Well, he has to do the Pistons game today, so that, he, has okay. a, he has a fair excuse. He was with George Blaha, I think in Washington, Ooh. wherever the hell the Pistons are playing. Uh, but I got to see it live. I, I just the people. It felt like I was in this in the stadium, even though I wasn't there. The place was packed, and you, you felt like they were playing. Uh, you know the the forward down the field every time they scored. Oh, yeah. Like it just felt like that type of environment you want to be in. And you can sense the anxiety. The first three drives for the Lions, great. Like everyone's on all time high. I'm excited. We're fist bumping. We're screaming. I got blue hair. Me and you had that spray we put in our hair yesterday. We're fired up. Still in there. And they started a lot better than I thought they would, which yep. is a great thing. I, th- I just think the energy of that stadium was unbelievable. And I would – I just – you don't understand it watching it on TV. And, and if, if you went to the game, please comment and, and kind of speak on that because I have no idea what kind of environment that was, and I can't imagine what, t- what type of environment that was. I think it's the, the best – one of the hardest – places to play in the entire nfl you go to ford field when it's standing room only first playoff game and you had matthew stafford he got booed coming out the tunnel which rightfully so uh and then the game started lions first three drives they scored jared goff was perfect he was 10 for 10 the first you know 10 throws whatever it was um he was zipping it he was slinging it and that was one of my takeaways early on i'm like golf is locked in yeah that was the biggest thing everyone we talked all week booner about Matthew Stafford and, and the revenge game and coming back to Fort Field. Not a lot of people spent time on the on the Jared Goff versus the Rams storyline. You could tell uh, right off the bat he he wanted vengeance. Yeah, he did. And and to the just the energy in the building. Dan Campbell said after the game, I don't know if you heard this, but he was like, as I was coming out just for pregame warmups, like walking down the tunnel, he he was like, I could feel the energy, like I could feel it, like. And when you just don't have that, like, when have we ever had that in Detroit? Like Lions fans have never been able to enjoy like a, a meaningful playoff game like that was the first playoff game ever at fort field uh, right and i think they built that stadium they built that to like we want to have playoff like obviously we want to have playoff games here like that stadium was built to be loud and one of the loudest in the in the nfl uh so they finally got to see it um i, I dude I, I think yesterday like i was saying this at the, the watch party when we were watching it like with spenny um you know he was asking like easy was sitting in the back like super anxious like i need to i have to be away from everyone you were with your dad i i, I kept telling people i was like 
we have waited 30 years for this where everyone we're like if anyone if anyone watching right now like wherever you had to watch that game whatever you had to do like do it like usually yeah. i go i go at you and i'm like come to the watch party like come come chill with the boys and watch the game like dude go through that with your dad like easy was in the back i'm like do that like this was like the anxiety going into this game like on our uh what we're nice we've talked about how nervous were you one to ten i was like i'm an eight the anxiety yeah. of like playing a playoff game in detroit like we've never had that and like the fact you can break this in in 30 since 1992 like that was something that was super special um the whole jared goff thing the the, the fans chanting his name jeff like everyone chanting jared goff's name before the game before he even he threw a ball it just showed like i, I said the pregame show what did i say i said when jared goff comes out it's going to be the loudest cheers he has ever had and he's going to mm-hmm. feel the whole city of detroit behind him and before he even got out on the field in pregame they were chanting jared goff for like five minutes and then right after that matthew stafford ran out of the field and he got booed so it was like yeah. now he, now we all know i think things are starting to turn in here jeff Detroit, yeah. hey, the things are starting to turn. You know what it's I love crazy. too? The uh, the the bar by Dan Campbell. The uh, well, you're good enough for Detroit, Jared Goff. And threw ball for the game ball. That that was hard. Beautiful. That was hard. I, I can't I can't lie. I think Jared Goff, and I, have to, I I could be wrong on this. I read a stat somewhere that he's the only quarterback to start for a playoff team, get traded, and then beat that playoff team with another playoff. That's team. crazy. So, like, he started on a playoff team, got traded, and beat that team that he started playoff games with. I, I think he's the only quarterback to ever do that. Typically, you know, when you're trading quarterbacks, they just yeah. washed or, you know, like Jared bounced back and, and beat the Rams. So, it was a great storyline. Um, in the city of Detroit, I mean, hopefully in the next couple of years, not hopefully, I think they will, playoff playoff wins will be normalized and we yeah. won't have to, like, celebrate. Like, Houston Texans just got one and, and with a rookie, and it's like, cool, great. And now they're just – they move on. But for us, though, it was significant because it's 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 proof that what Dan, Sheila, Brad, what they're building is legit. It's real. And, you know, it starts with guys like a Jared Goff who you trade for. You traded Stafford away for. It starts with a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, which you drafted. It starts with your best player on offense, Amin Ross St. Brown, who who showed up and, and sealed the game with it with the catch he made. And I think what Brad Holmes is building here with, with, with the job he's done as a GM, he's elite, dude. Like he, he's the best, in the, one of the best in the league. He's elite. And the last thing I really on his resume was just the record, the wins, and of course the postseason wins. He was doing everything else correctly. You look at his last three drafts, I and mean, he walked in Panay Sewell, St. Brown, Ali McNeil. Like yeah, okay. <laughs> those are three guys that were a part. And then Ifi, Ifi to Malafanu. That those are four guys. Um, and Derek Barnes, if you want to sprinkle him in and, and so on and so forth. But those are guys that he got right away. You don't get this thing on track as quickly if you don't have a guy like Brad finding talent. Of course, you need Dan Campbell, a coach like Dan, to get it all right. But Brad, he he's cooking. And you see the emotion on his face. Like, and I, you know, maybe we can put it in post you know, recording with the video of him celebrating. Name another Unbelievable. general manager that has that type of energy. Dude, I saw I saw Bears fans. Bears fans were tweeting out and just like going at their front office saying there's zero chance our GM and coach will ever have this energy. What are <laughs> we doing here? Like if we're trying to chase a team like this and our are we know for a fact our coach and GM aren't going to bring that to the table, we're never going to we're never going to compete. Like and and the thing is like people don't realize is Brad's put together three draft classes that have been elite. Like yes. every single one is good and they just keep getting better and better. Like when I like, I'll bring it up first time on the show, the Booner path, all of that. When I talk about that, like for the next two, three, four years, part of it too is Brad Holmes, like him, like knowing that he's just put three back to back to back draft classes together and they're all elite guys. Like in this last draft class, you have an all pro tight end like that. You have a top five running back in Jameer Gibbs. Like him putting these guys together, he's going to have more and more and more and more draft classes. And they're just going to keep getting better and better. And and all of those holes that this Lions team has, like Brad's going to start filling all of those on defense. Um, on a, If you need to get some more offensive linemen for, for de- whatever it is, yeah. like, he is going to do that in these next draft classes. And, and the, the, the organization is just going to keep going up. It, it does. It, it, to me, it's like, there, there's two things. It's like, you could say who, who who's like to blame or, who gets all the credit for this success? Like Dan Campbell, I, I say it all the time. He's brought the culture in. That whole grit culture, what they kind of are about, he's brought that in. But Brad Holmes brought the players in, and he continues Absolutely. to find the players. And, and and I think and then Sheila's just allowed them to do that and brought them and said, go do it. So, I mean, I think everyone, it's like a 33-33-33. Like you all have a, like that much 
it's just it's nuts to me and what brad's done that energy yesterday that he has and like do we have seen that all year like last year remember the packers game at lambo last year him running around the fields with the fans we mm. saw that this year again like he has done that all year he is the best he is one of the best gms in the nfl i'm not gonna say the best because there are some good guys that like some dudes out there but he, he right. is up he has solidified himself as one of the best in the game now which is crazy to say yeah, every every great chef, you need you need some great ingredients. Like Dan yeah. Campbell can can cook up a gourmet mm-hmm. meal, but you need some great great ingredients uh, yep. to make it a great meal as well. Uh, and, and you look around the league. I mean, look at organizations that are proven winners. The 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, will John Lynch right behind him. You go to the Eagles, Nick Sirianni, even though he's on the hot seat for some reason. Howie Roseman, crazy go, by the way. Yeah, it is crazy. You go to the the Chiefs, Andy Reid, Brett Veach. Like you go around, you you find me a good organization and I'll find you a great GM. Even Schneider with the Seahawks. There's another yes. one. So for Brad Holmes, like, yeah, Dan Campbell, I, this doesn't take anything away from what he's doing. I mean, he's in charge of him and his coaching staff developing players, so that's all him. But finding these guys, like, look at some of your best players on Sunday. And they're, yeah. they're, they're Brad Holmes guys. We've seen we've seen as well around the NFL. I, I used this example a couple weeks ago. Like, look at the, just look at the Rams. Like, they went out there and paid for a Super Bowl, Less basically. Deep. Yeah, yeah no, and, and they went and paid for it. Brad, what Brad Holmes is doing right now, and then like this organization, they're doing it like the 49ers are, the Ravens have done, like uh the Eagles, like they are building through the draft. They're building and this isn't like a short term, like, hey, we just want to win a Super Bowl this year, and that's it. If they go win a Super Bowl this year, the way Brad Holmes drafts and the way he's built this team, they're gonna be right back there next year. And then they'll be they'll be contending the year after, and then the year like it's just there's different types. It's the same thing in the NBA. It's the same thing in any like sport like baseball. You can pay for your teams or you can go draft them and build something from the ground up and be long term like the Golden State Warriors. Brad Holmes is doing that right now in Detroit, which is something we have never we have never seen that we've seen GMs come in and try and draft. We've seen coaches like we've seen all of this happen. We've never seen someone actually be successful with it. And, and we have one. Of, it's just wild to say that Detroit Lions have one of the best GMs and head Foreign. coaching duos in the NFL. You got you got you on the morning show with Adam. You guys used to say that. What's three things you need to do to win football games and go win the Super Bowl? You need a GM, a coach, and a quarterback. Yep. The Detroit Lions have all three now, and and mm-hmm. they they could potentially have all three for a really long for the next four or five years. And 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 they're just going to keep drafting and getting better and better and better. Like. You can hop on the booter path whenever you want, Jeff. Well, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you can. Hey, this isn't just a one year thing. This is a four or five year booter path. This thing is a long path. You can. Draw, I'm just throwing it out there. You know what? I'm. I might have to. I might have to see, start getting warmed up. I might have to take a, tr- a stroll down the path. I'm probably you, a really, recruiting trip. Recruiting yeah, trip. I, yeah, I'm. I'm cool with it. You've already been recruiting me. I think I'm leaning. I, I got to announce my official commitment. I do. You're my number one recruit, five star. I've been trying for I'm months. Trying to, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and secure that one. We'll. We'll discuss that later. Maybe some NIL deals. We'll see what we got coming. All right. But all right. Uh, to, back to the Brad Holmes point, though. What you're saying, <laughs> having a guy like Brad, though, it also gives you so much leverage because if if guys, for example, the Eagles, uh, Javon Hargraves, great player, had a great year with the Eagles. The Eagles had the leverage because they have a guy in Howie Roseman that finds talent. Uh, yep. And he does a great job at it. That they can be like, all right, Javon Hargraves, we're not going to pay you and go draft a Jalen Carter. That's how we're going to do this. Like you have the opportunity, and they've done it in San Francisco as well. Guys are up for contracts. It's like we'll just draft another one of you. That, that's just how we operate. It gives you because organizations they'll hit on a draft pick, and then they won't re-sign them, and then and then pick a bust, and now they're 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 going backwards. Yep. Red Holmes is going to give you that type of leverage where yes, you want to keep an eight Hutchinson, obviously. But some of those middle of the pack players that are that are solid starters, you could be like, well, we're if we're going to pay our quarterback Jared Goff, which assuming they extend him, we'll see what happens. You need a GM that can operate like that. You know, yeah. sign some of your core players, and then other guys you're just drafting. Look at Les Need with the Rams; they can't afford all the talent they they acquire, uh, but they find a way to replace them. So. And, and- with GMs too, it's like the thing with that too is like I, what you said is correct. Like people will try and, and draft and let guys go and it doesn't work out. Typically, it's like okay, Brad Holmes. You could say, hey, he had one good draft. He's put back to back to back. Like, oh yeah, it, it, it's very proven at this point. So now you trust any pick that he gets. He's not going to be a hundred percent. He's not going to shoot a hundred percent, but he's going to shoot eighty percent, and and he's going to get you guys that you need. And then like that's elite, can, yeah, very elite, and you can trust him now. Elite. Yes, and if you and, and this is another thing too, like with the whole thing, like the drafting, like with, example, Hendon Hooker, right? Like yeah. uh, me and you had conversations last year, and I think we were in uh, like lockstep that yes, you need to start going after a quarterback to be safe. Like good organizations, when they get to a certain point and they build up, you start you have extra picks to get a quarterback, and, and you're you're you're, cha- you're 
you're always chasing the Pat, Pat, Patrick Mahomes, the Josh. Like you're always chasing those guys. Right. What people and I think you might have hit me with this argument before. It's like I think Brad Holmes is like he can draft eighty percent. Now Hendon Hooker, just because he Brad Holmes is eighty percent, doesn't mean he's going to work out. And, and that's like the thing people have to understand is like Brad's going to draft people that don't work out. It's gonna you're gonna have to go back to the well and you're gonna have to draft again. Hendon Hooker might not work out and you have to go back and get another quarterback. Um, it's the same thing with any position in my opinion. But his hit rate, Jeff is oh, it's something that you yeah. you don't get, like. <laughs> You can't let Brad Holmes go no. ever because his hit rate is way too high. No, I, I said it today on the morning show. I'm like, sign that man to a lifetime contract, like yeah. till he till he dies. Like I want him in the organization, at least a part of it. Like he, him and he's Dan Campbell. Be- I, and I don't. Yeah. I said it a couple weeks ago. I was like, I don't know if I ever going forward can see, and and it's crazy because it's only year three and we haven't even won like a Super Bowl. Nothing. I don't know if I can see Dan Campbell as good as he's been in Detroit and for in three years. I can't see him coaching for another football team. Like yeah, he just fits the city. He just fits Detroit. I could see him being like a Bill Belichick, being here for the next twenty years. And and and, and when I say that, like I don't mean that. Like like I, I really believe that. And I would be shocked if you guys want to clip this. And in in ten years he's gone, or in three years he's gone. I would be shocked if this isn't like a long term place for Dan. Imagine really just reflect back to when he was signed. People were upset that he got a six year contract. I want a 15 year like I was gonna say, man. like at the time, like eh, that's a lot, of, you know, it's it's a lengthy contract for a, a rookie head coach, uh, technically. Yes. I mean, he was already an intern, but his first real gig. Uh, now you understand why because of the because of the process that Sheila understood it would take. Like she knew, okay, we're gonna have to gut this thing out and and you know, patch it back up and build this thing back up from the foundation. And now everyone's talking about lifetime contract for Dan Campbell. So it's great. It's funny how that hey, works. I asked, I asked DMAC yesterday. You know, one of my, my life goals is to uh, drink a beer, sit down, have a conversation with Dan Campbell. I asked DMAC yesterday. I said, hey, D- like, you know, DMAC's a very honest person. Like, he would tell you how it is if it's, you know. So, DMAC, what do you think the percentage of chance in my lifetime in the next couple of years, me sitting down having a beer with Dan Campbell? He looked me dead in the eyes. And I promise you, I don't know what you think I'm going to say right now. D Max said seventy five percent. Wait, when 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 Darren McCarty tells you seventy five percent, that means it's seventy five percent. There is a good chance your boy might be sitting down with Dan Campbell I, here one of these days. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm with him. Why not? F it. Seventy five percent. I was shocked. I thought he was going to say like twenty, fifteen. You're like, because this is the question I have: Is does Dan even sit down with his players and have a beer? Like, you think he does that? I'm not a player. <laughs> I'm sure he. I'm sure he would. You're right. You're I'm right. sure he, he would, would actually, though. I'm would. sure coaches do because, like, I saw the Bill Belichick video the other day where uh, Randy Moss invited him to the Halloween party, and he showed up. That is I'm true. sure he had a beer. That is true. Yeah, I'm sure Dan. Fair. And, and it, I'm not really like a media member. Like, I could say we could say I'm a media member, but like, no, you're Booner. Booner, the Booner Path. I will do the Kool Aid. Like, what media member goes out and drinks Kool Aid like that? And just Nobody. Beers? Yeah, I no. That, that's not a thing. Right on brand for Dan, man. Yeah, and you I saw the your uh the one you did yesterday. That was the 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 double beer can and then double you had the Kool-Aid one. on top of that in the snow too. It was the, like the, negative the, 5 degrees. It was cold. You saw the Hey, the comments were killing me. Uh in a good way. Like they're like my guy, this guy's goaded. Like I yeah, saw I, I did see there was a bad comment and and guess what? I'm scrolling through looking at the comments and which I tell myself, Booner, don't look at the comments. I've seen some bad ones. Scrolling, scrolling, see someone come at me and guess who's underneath it? Jeff I Frady. <laughs> backing up your boy man he's back there like hey, don't, don't I, I go was, at booner oh uh, dude i i was with uh i was with lex last night and I, I was you know i was checking out the video and some guy commented like uh he's got the wrong uh hair color and it's not the same blue i'm like i saw, I, i'd comment i'm like that's your like that's your takeaway a guy just clashed two beers and then drank a whole uh thing dude. of kool-aid and and screamed about the lions winning a playoff game and his one comment his one takeaway was yeah, you just have the wrong blue in your hair. I'm like, don't I, be that guy. You must be fun I, at parties. God. Oh, dude, I, I will tell you this, dude. Since I've been doing the Kool-Aid videos and, and, and doing what, like what were nights, things started going up a little bit. Some of the comments and stuff, like there are some people who just live to hate. And I love and anyone who supports oh, yeah. and watches. Like I'm like you. I don't care if you hate or anything. Like I'll, I, you, you could see my comments back at them. I'll be like, hey, appreciate your support. Like, but some people just love. People be like, Booner, fix your teeth. Buddy, I've I'm 26 years old. I, I I've I've looked at my teeth in the mirror for forever. What are we talking about here? Like, yeah, what are we dude, doing? 
Dude, they just jealous. love to hate. It's, it's, it's like, hey, I'm just out here having fun. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> you have fun? You're not hurting? You're not bothering nobody? It's like it's jealousy. Crazy. Jealousy is a disease, man. And a lot of people have it. A lot of people Luca, are Lucas said downtown, he did a video, um, and, and some guy was like, I hate the dude that does the Kool-Aid videos. Like, what do you hate about it? Like, it, it's literally just a fun, it's supposed to be a fun video to celebrate. Like, what could you possibly take out of these videos of me yelling and having a good, and just being like a good fan? It, it, like, it's serious. Like, what are we doing? Like, if, just if won our first playoff you, game in 30 years. If they met you, I promise you, they would, it, like, it's different. 100%. I'll like, comment back at some people. They just delete their comment because I'm just like, hey, man, I hope you have a great day. <laughs> delete. They delete it. Like, surprise. Um, I want to I want to bring up one player that I think had a huge, not only game, but what he's been doing the last three games, seven sacks the last three games. That's been Aiden Hutchinson. Seven sacks. Some guys end their season with seven sacks, yeah. and they're happy. And Aiden's had seven the last three games, uh, including this one playoff game. So for Aiden Hutchinson to come out there, I know one of the sacks was kind of a kind of a gimme, but still, yeah, got I had, there. I think he had his highest pressure rate in his career. I could be wrong, but it was up there. He had a career game in terms of putting pressure on staff. Yep. And it couldn't come at a better time. You look at uh, Aiden Hutchinson and what he's done as a player from Michigan to now with the Detroit Lions. And I'm not saying this is all Aiden, but this this doesn't just happen. All right? I mean, he goes to Michigan. They win the Big Ten and, and first time in how long. They beat Ohio State. And then he goes to the Detroit Lions and helps them deliver a division title and win their first playoff game in 30 years. Aiden yeah. Hutchinson. That's a franchise defensive player. That dude, he's he's the real deal. He yeah, is. we we talked about it yesterday. I said, what do, what do your number two overall pick? Like these are the games, the playoffs, wild card, like whatever it is. Like these are the games you step up. And mm-hmm. in the last two or three weeks, when like things came to like crunch time to get to the playoffs to win the division, Aiden Hutchinson, your number two overall pick. He did what you drafted him to do, and and he was like the main piece of that defense. Uh-huh. I don't know where you. Hold on, hold on. I got it. We got a special guest coming in. Hold on. It's it's Klotzy. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's Klotzy. oh. oh my god. Can you, can you boys hear me fine? Lion yeah, super we... lion super fan. Oh uh, yeah. Hey, Klotzy. we're we're live on YouTube right now. No, Are we're we? not. We're no, not we're live. Not. We're, no, I'm we're, just kidding. We're, we're, hey, you. we're recording. We're just talking about Aiden, how he just completely wrecked the game on Sunday. That man was on a mission. Hey, did you guys see Good. did you guys see JJ Watt's tweet too? By the way, a lot of people know like Aiden Hutchinson, they're like Oh, he only has the spit. JJ Watt tweeted out was like, that man has the elite, an elite spin move. Like some like yeah. JJ Watt giving you credit, one of the best ever. Like it's it's fair. Yeah, because that's what like JJ's thing was too, and his fucking SWAT. But I mean, Aiden, it almost like at the beginning of the season was getting him in trouble because I felt like he had so much attention he was trying to rely on it too much. You know, if I, you know what I mean? It's almost like he yeah, was trying yeah. to do too much of the line of scrimmage, he wouldn't get to the quarterback. I think a lot of that has to do with the injury. You know what I mean? And like, I think it was the Carolina game. We had that pick, and he had that. He, he was talking about how he's bruised up for a while. Like that's going to affect it. So I think now he's just learning how to perfect it, and it's showing. Yeah, it, it seems like the spin move would like take him out of place, like sometimes. Mm-hmm. But if it works, my God, it works. Dangerous, like, there, he, dude. There was there was times yesterday though, like at the, the fourth quarter. I don't know if you guys noticed, like when we needed a pass rush from him. That he didn't even do a spin move. That man just bull rushed and just right around his defender got to Stafford and put pre- like in the in the last two possession. It was nuts. Like I was sitting there with Spencer and I'm like, I'm like, Hutch, like you're the number two overall play. Like, I'm just whispering in the mic, like, please give me something. Give me some like this should be your your hardest pass rush of the season right now. And that man. What did you guys put in your hair? Oh, uh, dude, it won't come out. It, it, my hair is messed up forever. <laughs> it was rough. I, I haven't put I didn't put anything in my hair today, and it's just sticking up like this. I don't know yeah, what, that, what's going on. I had the uh I think it took- it, it took a couple good, rounds. Huh? Hey, couple couple douses and shampoo. I think I had to put some conditioner. I was I, I had to. It took like thirty minutes to wash it out. It was a bitch. I Wash my hair it. like four times. It's, it was a bitch. Like, stuck. Was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. For the love of the game. For the love, For the love of the, of the game. game. That's right. Hey, the Claude. blue mullet. I'm gonna tell you what. The blue mullet. A lot of people were fans of it. I'm just gonna throw <laughs> that out there. With the hutch, with the hutch thing. They're, they were talking that, about dude, it, dude. You look. You look scary. Yeah, yeah. No, I was no one frightened was, when I saw that picture of you, you went before the game. <laughs> I, was, I was frightened. That might have been the best I've ever looked. Hey, Dude, people I, are going I, crazy downtown, though. Boys, yeah, yeah, you were downtown, right? How was it? Yeah, that, that was wild. Like, especially when you were leaving the game, like, nobody was like destroying anything, but people were going crazy. I love crazy. that. Crazy. I love that because we were watching it at Fifth Ave and they had like the tent going up and they were like having the dj go over with the game bro it was such a good time that's so that's so awesome so, yeah, I I found the, first hater. the first yeah, hater ever bro 
I don't know why people hate Wait, the, like, the video that I yeah. make. Oh, I don't, well, I don't what understand. Said earlier. Yeah, that's what Booner said earlier. So explain what happened. He said he, he doesn't like this. Clearly. So I had, I had my backpack on. It has the Woodward Sports thing on the back of it, right? So like uh, they were like, oh, are you recording for Woodward? I was like, no, but they're like, literally the first thing he says, he's like, yeah, I don't mind Woodward, but I really don't like that guy who drinks Kool-Aid. <laughs> I was like, oh, we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. He whoa. added you. He like added what? What is that? Me drinking the Kool Aid is supposed to be fun. I don't get how he people. You said that it was hate. annoying. He's annoying. Like let, let it fuel you. Fuel, fuel, fuel the hate. I'm gonna hey, do buddy, it more. Hey buddy, just scroll. Just scroll past it. <laughs> Un unfollow. Maybe you should just movement. unfollow. Actually, you can't unfollow because it's so big. It's in everyone's for you page. What a loser he is. <laughs> Man, just flex, subtle flex. <laughs> Hey, hey, that mullet changed Moon, dude. He's a lot more confident. I like it. I yeah. like it. And I, I mullet, think I'm like, the mullet might be my thing for the rest of my life, sadly. Dude, see, so yeah, let's go. I'm, yeah, I'm I, I, I think it's well fitting. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah, it. it really is. I can't see it with the headphones on, but I love it. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, well, I was at um, I was at Sister Ollie's watching the game. I had my dad there. Uh, Lex was there. Her dad was there. And we were watching, but I'd never seen my dad like, he, he was sitting there staring at the TV. He was in like shock. Like, he didn't know what he was watching. <laughs> <laughs> like Something like the lions never experienced, before, bro. Never experienced the lions not only they never you know they led the entire game which was like the biggest thing they never lost the crazy game. so that was even more like what the hell are we doing even when you expected the the three-letter word to pop up again and late in the game i was sitting there going uh oh here, like puka Nukua cannot be guarded like that Dude. that you guys can't tell you tell me you weren't like i was so the last you, few possessions i was like there's, there's no like what are we doing here Here's the thing of why I was confident because, and I, why the whole time I was like, eh, yeah, but because like, the Lions defensively, I think had the perfect recipe because they were bending and not breaking the whole night. And yeah, Puka had 189 yards, whatever he did, but Cooper Cup had 27 yards. That's true. Tyron so Williams Cup had 61 screws yards. over, bro. That was Cooper the big Cup's one. Tyron like Williams getting, getting shut like, down. I, I really think they were just planning to stop Cooper Cup because he was the guy that through the years, like that's Stafford's guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in clutch situation, that's where Stafford's going. Let Puka like do what he wants to do. I know you don't want him to get 189 yards, but Kendall Vildor, it's going to happen hey, sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, Kendall was getting cooked, by the way. I'm going to throw it Cam out Sutton there. Cam got cooked. Cam yeah, got cooked. Cam on that touchdown, that little hesitation. Oh, yeah. Lucas, you're a receiver. That little hesitation off the jump, Cam like, he didn't realize what happened to him. He no. was like, oh, my. And he's a vet, dude. Like, he was like, what? Puka's going to be so good. Hey, real quick. Can we just have this conversation real quick? Like, this is like a, a trust circle here. Ben Johnson okay. was pretty bad in the second half. Oh, yeah. What are we, Like, that's the second time. Oh, yeah. Like, in Dallas, the second half, in, like, or the first, like, three quarters in Dallas, yeah. he was brutal. And now, like, I. I don't know if I was the only one that had that feeling, but I was like, Ben, what are we, what are we doing? Like it, it, it also, and, and I'll let Luke, I want Lucas, know what he was doing. I, I want Lucas to get his thoughts on this. I, my, my thing is, and, and it's hard to go. I mean, they went three straight drives, three straight TDs. Like at some point Raheem Morris is going to make an adjustment. Like at some point they're going to adjust. And I just think in the second half, they couldn't run the football, which is, which is part of it. He just went uh, away from it though. It felt yeah, like yes. It, and, for and no and reason. Times, yeah. That's times, what there was times. He does that all the gives, time. There was times where Jameer Gibbs was out there, and I'm thinking, why isn't David Montgomery out there? Like Jameer Gibbs has been has been getting stopped all night long, all night. Yeah, and it was almost like they were trying to use Jameer, but not really in the run game. And it's like it was almost like watching the beat, like when they were playing Kansas City. But I also wonder if that's what their their whole game plan was. Remember how like Jameer wasn't really going nuts against Kansas City. David wasn't, but Amon Ra was. Like even yeah, Laporta really right. didn't do much. And I think all of that is just to get quick bursts and you don't know what you're looking at as the defense. Because maybe those drives, like how you were saying, why isn't David Montgomery in? I, I bet a lot of the defenders He's were get four yards the same carry. exact thing. Especially yeah. when that's an inexperienced defense. You know what I mean? And like, say what you want, you, but on that one where it's like, you would normally expect late in the game, a check down to go to Jameer. It went to David Montgomery, he made a dude miss, and that ended up setting up a huge drive for the Lions as far as time of possession. So I wonder you guys, if that's what you guys, you're thinking. Hey, do you guys think though, like, Dan Quinn, Raheem Morris, like, do you guys think that Ben just, like, he tries to get a little too, like, now that I'm looking back at it, his worst games are versus the best DCs. Like, is he just trying to get yeah, a little too cute when, when it comes to it? And he's like, let's go, Jameer. Let's try this. Let's, instead of just saying, like, let's just be us, let's give DeMont the ball, let him go, and then it'll open everything out. Like, it feels like at the Dallas game with Dan Quinn, he was trying to, like, to, to do too much instead of just running the ball. And then this game in the, four, in the second quarter half, it was just, 
let's try to get cute and take the lead and, and, and end this game. And it just didn't I, work. I, I also think part of that is us being so spoiled with Ben Johnson that we're used to scoring 40, 40, 30, 30, that there's going to be games that aren't great. Like the Dallas game, for example, technically, technically, although I didn't like some of the, you know, maybe the calls in the game, Dude. Dan, they won that game technically. All they right, did, but they the, seven out of their eleven or eight yes. out of their eleven possessions. But it doesn't help. It, it, it also doesn't or help Jared forward. Goff turn the ball over twice in that football game too. So, I, but eight out also, of eleven also, possessions, Jeff. Eight out of eleven. But possessions here's the thing, guys, Whatever but, it is, that's brutal. I I, I get it. You had three good it. possessions in a full game. As well, though. Like you got to think about like think about the guys you just mentioned. Dan Quinn, he's been that dude as a defensive coordinator for a while. Raheem Morris, you can say what you want about him. He's been only been like two or three years, but the two or three years he's been the DC since Staley left, he's done a phenomenal job. Spags, he kind of struggled in the second half against Kansas City. Those guys are all elite defensive coordinators and doing it for a while. Ben mm-hmm. Johnson, he's been a OC for a year and a half. So a lot of the times at halftime, those elite DCs can go in there and be like, all right, yeah, this is what we need to do. Those second half adjustments, I think that's what Ben has to do to kind of take that next step. But he will do that. It just comes with time. And Look about like the second half against kind of like the weaker DCs. The Lions keep on rolling and they blow teams out. You know what I mean? Like in in LA when they went out to LA, he was biting him around. You can even like the games uh, in Minnesota against Brian Flores. Like he was doing his thing against those guys. Oh yeah. yeah like, sure. I I just think it's when good DCs who are going to eventually either were head coaches or like Raheem Morris will be a head coach one day. They're going to be head coaches for a reason, and especially in an offensive driven league. It's hard when a you have an elite DC making second half adjustments and you're still very inexperienced. And, and and that's, real quick, and, Ben and that, Johnson what? is a, the dude still. I just want to get yeah. that. I don't want people. To oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is just like offense stalled out three points in the second half. Where did that go wrong? I just think it was play calling a little bit. Well, you guys remember too, like Sean McVay. And, well, he won a, until he won a Super Bowl, but Kyle Shanahan. Those two get criticized for for what they do in the second half or if they're mm-hmm. trailing, which is a Shanahan big still does. Yeah, Shanahan, Shanahan still he's does. never gotten over that hill. Yeah, Shanahan, like, isn't there like a stat Shannon at like when he doesn't have the lead in the fourth quarter, he's never won a game or something? It's something ridiculous. Like it, his record is is atrocious. So like it, you could you could say that about uh, many other uh, OCs, offensive minds. But I, Lucas is right. The other thing, it makes no sense because you see Matt Lafleur, uh, the Packers go into the Jerry World and, and face that Dan Quinn defense, and Matt Lafleur, you can say whatever you want about him. Jeez, Shoot, Jordan Love out. He looked like Aaron Rodgers out there. Like the, did they the, punt the, once? I don't even know if they. I mean, so this league doesn't really make any sense sometimes. I mean, Ben, we've seen Ben. You brought up the Brian Flores point. We've seen him. The Broncos defense. Remember, they were number one in takeaways. They didn't take the football Mm -hmm. away once. Like, like, so uh, it is what it is. I get why. There's many fans that feel the way you do, Booner. But I think Ben's still learning. Yeah, I don't think it's like I'm not trying to go at Ben. Like Ben's gonna be. He's the number one head coaching candidate in the NFL. Yeah, you can't score three in the second half. Like, but it's just, yeah, the second half, three. three points, especially in a playoff game when, like, you had a chance multiple times to pull away with two possession, make it a two-possession game, and you just couldn't do it. Um, or, like, just to end the game in the second half. and You just never did it. And, and it was like you just kept right. having the ball. It, it's not like you don't have the bad players. Like, Jared Goff, he played out of his mind. But then you just kind of went away from what was working, and, and you started running the ball with J- or Jameer Gibbs on the outside. He just kept – like, it's just everything. Yeah, like, oh, my God. That was driving me nuts. It was like – it, it's just – at the same time, like they're running away from Aaron Donald, you know what I mean? When they do <laughs> yes. that, that's what they're doing. <laughs> like that's what like, they're doing. They're like, yeah, we don't want to go north. What happens when you play against it? Like, I, I still, I, I truly believe whoever they play Sunday, they win and they go to the NFC Championship oh. game. Versus yeah. the 49ers, though, it's like Ben, you have to lock in because you can't have a second half like that. Like, I believe yeah. they can beat the 49ers in, in any game because they have the, the guys to do it. You can't have a, a three point second half to beat the 49ers. Cannot do it. Or the Dallas yeah. game. You can't start with the first three quarters like you did in Dallas. You have to have a full game ready to go. We've seen it. We've seen it. It's just you can't have a, a lapse of a game. You have to have a game plan. Like you can't do what you just did in the second half or you or you're not going go to go. Thinking about the 49ers just stresses me out. It just stresses me out. Yeah, and now you have what the Packers uh facing the 49ers. We love that. Can we though. all agree with that? The what? the the Taylor Decker oh. call back was a was saying. a gift from the football gods. It I was see what a, you're saying. Like, shut up, deal with this pain because you are regardless going to get two home games, and most likely, in my opinion, I think Tampa has a chance to win. Call me crazy. I think Tampa. Right? I think Tampa a very beats, legitimate I, chance that Baker Mayfield is coming into Ford Field for the divisional round. And I don't know when happens, this comes out. We could look dumb. I'm not but... a religious guy, but that might make me believe in God. <laughs> if that's the case, I, I might believe in God if Baker Mayfield steps foot in Ford Field yeah. for a divisional playoff. Game. <laughs> 
if oh my Baker gosh. We already beat done, them on the road. Yeah, that's I mean, what I'm it, saying, bro. There's no way without we, CJ. No without and that James Houston probably will start getting the rotation next week. Oh yep. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, he has to come and, off IR. He he I mean, he like his time is up. His 21 days is up. I think like Wednesday maybe. So he see, James Houston has to be back this week. You you got a thing too, like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. They're going to ev- evaporate this Eagle secondary, like e- evaporate. Yeah. And, and and like we'll handle that when we get there. I like the, I like the Lions matching up. You know what, Booner? You got me. Damn it. <sighs> Talking about an NFC Championship appearance. That what did I what did I, I, I what did I, three months ago? Three months ago, when I first started the Booner Path, three months ago, like September, whenever it was. Lucas knows this. You guys both know this. The first thing I said was if the, I and I said I'm putting a bear, Booner guarantee on this. Three months ago, this is the, the start of the Booner Booner Path. I said. If the Detroit Lions get two home games, they will be playing in the NFC Championship game. That was the origination of the Booner Path. Did you get a replay was, on that? Was that true? That is, <laughs> that is challenge very, flag. One of those commercials, that was, those progressive commercials. That was State the origination. That was the origination of the Booner Path. Was if they get two home playoff games, the Detroit Lions would be in the NFC Championship game. And if you're in the game and in the play, like whoever who it's, you have a chance to win that. So you have a chance to beat the 49ers. This is another Can I home game. Side note. The 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 Booner path. You're in. You told me yesterday you're in. I I am. I am. No, no, it, it was the one seed. It was Lucas. No, it was. But the it's thing with the, the path seed. is the thing with the path. There's multiple. It's like, hey, how can we get to the one seed to get this? How can we do this? How can Dude, we do that? How many yeah, paths? Hey, hey it's look, either you're we'll, on or you're not. On, this is not. This is not. We'll we'll be in here for three. You're either on or you're not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. We're on the path. All on the path. Hey, well, yesterday on the, on the post game show, Anson started going at the path. I looked at Anson. I said, "I'm telling you what, there's a lot of there's a you lot of followers." I, I, I was I was off camera. I was off camera looking at him. I didn't even say it on a mic. I just yelled over to him. I said, "Listen, you're getting into some deep waters right now. There's a lot of fans on the path. Those the the, the chat's going to go completely against you if you start talking about the path in a bad way." Ask Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll back him up. I guess. I mean, I, there's a lot of there's a lot. The chat will so turn funny. on you. Yeah, I he no Lucas. I don't I don't there's like Colts, like I at this point I would say. Like I said one thing and Booner goes, Everybody drop L's in the chat for Jeff. There had to be a hundred L's. <laughs> he's got, got he's got like Neil bots. He's got Booner bots. My, bots. No, Booner bots <laughs> Booner bots are bigger than Neil bots. <laughs> the 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 path I, is bigger I believe than Neil it, bots. bro, because you're just like Neil gets like the the older crowd, I feel like. I feel like there's not yeah. many young, young uh Neil bots, but you I think you get all genres. Yeah, and there's people who don't even watch the all. shows. There's people who don't watch the shows who are like Booner Path, baby. Don't even know yeah. how you know it. But there's go, Booner. Booner. On the Booner Path. I'm in Rock. Guess who said it the other day? Actually, Herman Moore on the heavyweight said, "I'm on the Booner Path." Yeah. So there, there. Are, this is well, a, this is a thing. Okay, it, it, and that's all. I listen. I love you, Booner. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, I really am. I'm a great. I'm a great friend. I'm happy for you. I, Thank you. I, the reason why I'm I was frustrated is. And I don't want to. I don't want to pick this bone today. No, I know I what just, you're going to say. You're going to say it's, I, I, it's not a. It's not a. Uh, what's the word? No, can't. I'm not going to say that. I just. I not was going to say. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say that. I just didn't know what definition it was. Like at first, when you told me the Booner Path was the path to get to the Super Bowl if they had two home games, I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't path know. Path is I, a vision. It but then sometimes. you turned it, and then you turned it into well, it's a five year, three year plan. I'm like, well, it yeah, is. they're going to be successful in three, five years. Like, fuck yeah, I'll get on board with that. But I don't know what I'm signing up for. If like, I'm being contract, honest, dude, this you're is you're asking great... me, Booner, you're asking me to sign a contract, and it's in like Chinese. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm signing. So. You're the only one that reads it in Chinese. Everyone else can read it in, <laughs> in, in, in English. You're the only one. Listen, I'm, this is what, what I'm telling I'm you though. It is a long term thing. What the okay. Booner Path is doing for like the city and for and for fans, this is exactly what it's doing. It is it is taking people away from that that three letter word that I don't want to say, and it's taking people from there and putting it into the brand new Lions, and, and it's like slowly like. T- throwing that away there you know what i mean like that's okay. that's it. it's like let's change the mindset from the old three-letter word let's change it to this new one and and, and this this thing's legit like this it's is new. This is... it's cousinism i don't know what that is but yes sir <laughs> and, and it, it gets it gets everybody that yeah. yeah that yeah we'll roll with that i like that i, I like have that. some merch coming for the booner path too I, I got a text yeah after the game last night uh yeah. for some merch so i might you gotta get hey. you gotta get uh Jalen to take some pics. And we need to get some pictures going. Yeah, we'll have a little photo shoot. Things are coming. Booner Path is, yeah. is rolling. <laughs> We're off to a good start. Yeah, we, Lucas, we no. need the action. Start. You gotta you yeah. gotta get it's it's just gotta say the path. Uh, yeah, like yeah. 
Like you, you just know it's Booner's pack. And on the back, it's just like a picture of you. Like you know how they do, like the presidents, like painted pictures. <laughs> like they, they had the Obama picture, and it was oh like, yes, <laughs> you got Twenty twenty four. The red one. Have it on the front. Have oh. it on the front, and then the back have like Lucas. a circle, and it says the path. Lucas, that I'm that that shirt will be made this week. I'm your marketing manager now, dude. That shirt, we need to get that made this week. We need to find a way to sell some of that. Ooh, that's I'm good. I like that. Uh, you know what? I'm with it. I'll get one of those shirts. F it. I'll buy one. It'll say Let's Booner go. 2024 at the bottom of it. Hey, oh! what, you, uh, what, did you, what did you guys Next. think? You guys see on uh, Kirby on, on social media that hit on Tyler Higby? I I yeah. saw a side of myself that I never want to see again yesterday. And I talked about this on the morning show. It's speaking about you cousinism. Uh, no, like, yeah. Like, I, I when I was watching the game, I'm, I'm watching. No, Klotz, 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 you would have been proud of me. I, it, and I don't want to see this this man, all right? I, I don't know. It's just on Lions game day, but it's also in the playoffs. I'm watching the game. Rewind before the Higby uh, thing when Matthew got the double shot and he's on the ground knocked <laughs> out. Dude, I sat there going, yeah! I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Carson Wentz, get your ass in the ball. Stay out! Stay and out! Then, and then he came back out of the tent and I go, shit. And then I saw Tyler Higby. Well, Kyron Williams got he got like a concussion or he was ruled out with a wrist injury. When he got hit hard, I'm like, yeah, make him feel you. Make him feel you. I'm like bring in Ronnie Rivers. <laughs> bring in Ronnie Rivers. And then Tyler Higby got hit. And by the way, that's how the league wants guys to tackle now. Sorry. I don't know. What to tell you. Can't hit him up. Can't hit him up top. Can't hit him like that's and, right in okay, the middle, let's, right? Let's say you can't hit him up top. Tyler Higby's like a power forward build. He's huge. Kirk, huge. Kirby Joseph is like probably a buck or two, like 225. Like he's not yeah. that big of a dude. If Kirby yeah. Joseph could hit him high, he would bounce off of him. Like that's how Kirby Joseph has tackled since he's entered the league because he's just a smaller DB. He he's a great to. coverage guy, but he's not the best tackle in the world, so he's got to go low. No, no. He's 200 he pounds, by the way. 200 pounds. He's even lighter. 200 pounds? Okay, so <laughs> less than I thought. Like, <laughs> To yeah. be honest, to be honest, I think yeah. the only reason it was such a big deal, that one was, was because he did it to TJ Hawkinson, and that's yeah, and he, he he's had, taken out two tight he's ends. He's taken out two ACLs this year. Yeah, like he's, he's two for two on that, which is like, you don't want that knee to Kneecap biter, as some would say. He's a kneecap biter. Dance, <laughs> yeah, the kneecap tour 2023. <laughs> Kirby that Joseph. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like I wonder if he's like the guy who's like, you're the kneecap guy. What, what, what is that? that's what, that's what he got from Sean Payton, C- putting bounties on guys. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, day. don't say that. No, 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 no. Like oh, no, Jeff, don't like, don't Dan say Campbell, that. We don't need that on our team. We don't need that on our team, boys. Take, Take them away. Because no, imagine if that a, was no, but it's it's like you can learn from every bad Jeff situation. Bad. You you can take things from bad situations. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think, dude. No, listen, listen. When the guys get hurt, I don't want guys to get hurt. But no, if no. they're, if they're, if like, hey, if they are hurt, they don't play. Let's go, boys. We're moving on. <laughs> we have a better yeah. chance of winning. Because like, you got to think, if, you're not cheering for. I would rather play a, a healthy team. Than well, that. If you got to think, if Jared Goff got English smacked, there. if Jared Goff got smacked, and Rams fans are watching that game, and he's out cold on the ground, we think Rams fans, oh, poor Jared. No, they're like, going, no. oh yeah, yeah. The, it's Teddy just in the heat of the moment thing. Like once you're like, ah, oh, once you find the humanity, and it was like, all right, dude, just tore. Hey, to be honest, too. Up. Whoever, whoever's supposed to take him out of the game and not like, like that man was out cold. Like Stafford? he should, <laughs> yeah. he should not have been able to get back in that yeah, football I, game. I don't, I don't know how he got back in. Like, do they not watch the TV broad? Like, do they not do their job? Like that man's eyes were in the back of his head and he was out for a good five seconds and then woke up. and was like, he kind of, like, he, he got stepped on on his shoulder and he didn't even feel it until he got up and they got up. He was like, it was oh, like a happened? UFC knockout. It was like a UFC knockout. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just said, Hey, just go back in and play football, bro. For another half. That's like a dude getting knocked out in the UFC and going back and then just fighting again. Like it just made no, it was like, uh, I'm mind blanking right now. Uh, Ben Askren. It was like a Ben Askren <laughs> knee. He got hit with the Ben Askren knee. Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Or no, that's you're talking about. Yeah, George. Hey, yeah, George. These dudes, yeah. these dudes. Uh, did you guys see the video? Um, Danny Amendola in uh, what's his name? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Who's the other receiver? Jules. Jules Julian? and Julian Edmond. Yeah, yeah, did you hear Jules. what they what they did grow what they did in, in New England? They said they used to get like eight to ten concussions a year. They said those two had a deal to where anytime they saw one of them get hit in the head and they and they passed out, they would run up to them and and wake them up real quick, whisper in the ear, grab your knee, grab your knee, 
grab he would grab his knee like he hurt his knee and then they would they would tell each other they would be like hey it's sunday but here's the date uh we're down we're up 21 to 7 there's this much time left on the clock so then he would run over they would get up run over to the sideline go to the trainer go into the tent and say hey it's sunday this 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 the, the score is this 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 and they're like good to go and they would go back out there and they said they did that <laughs> they said they did that all year and uh Ed, um the patriot way dude and um amadola hey, no. said edelman came up to him one time and said dude if i if i see stars one more time my career's over he said i'm done i don't want to i don't want to do this anymore he said edelman came up to him and, and, and he said seven times that year he said he saw stars and he got a concussion still played like four more years after that five more years. like that is crazy bro like that is like CTE at its finest. Like here Wait, we go. Have you ever like had a concussion? Because I know like Jeff. Yeah, like, in high school for sure. Booner, yeah, like smack, bro. Seeing Dude, stars yeah, is it, like one of the wildest thing. I didn't even realize I ever had. Con- I didn't know like when we were playing in high school. You, like you're like, concussed. Eight- I was con- dude. I would go to practice <laughs> multiple times every single year for football. I'd go to my coach and be like, "I'd be like, dude, I have the, like a migraine. It's so bad." And this was like from it, all man. year. I would throw up. Like I would throw up before practice. Like this was like all year long. Like every year it would happen to me. I'm like, that's why sometimes I might just be dumb. It's because that's, I think that's I think where Booner. That's where Booner was born. Yes, and dude, it's like those old helmets we used to have in high school, like ten years ago, dude, like those, the old like, riddle ones with like dude. the circle holes in the side. Yes. <laughs> yeah. they didn't even have good padding. It was like old padding yeah, was, with like yeah, a big... just like thick, cold yeah, dude. padding. I've probably had fifteen concussions in when middle school. All right, and high that's school. extreme. That's dude, extreme. no, dude, no, it was like every... no. I believe it. I believe it. I. It was I like every week. That. I played that's football CTE for ten role. years. It was like ten year career I had, and, and growing up. It was like every other week I had a migraine. It's like I just don't have a migraine. But I just, I'm just you and AB are probably like well, from the same family, but you just broaden out on the spectrum a little bit. Bro, yeah, it's it's opposite ways. <laughs> yeah, this is just like wild tweets bro. and controversial well, actions, and you're just boner. I just yeah, really I mean, like how did character. how did Booner make it out, but Chandler Jones can't? Like, I, I, how did he get the odd end? Two opposite sides, dude. Like, hey, some people Jones. go this way, some people go that way. Yeah, you see, you hear uh, Chandler Jones' new song about Bill Belichick. You see that? Oh you my hear that? gosh, bro! You hear that? Preach, <laughs> preach! Oh my god! Hey, it's kind of no Blake Page. I'm no not Blake Fades. Well, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh yeah, no <laughs> Russ. Hey, yeah, you. Hey, you keep Blake Fades out of this. All right, he's doing. I'm sure he's doing well, living on his farm. I'm sure he's in a pasture right now, freezing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Some vanilla ice remix. They're probably the Coil Ray. Oh, Goes hard. <laughs> Goes hard. I'll tell you that. But hey, you got you got to hear Blake Fades, Booner. He's uh, I, I said him to Lucas to piss him off. Just it's a whole nother. We'll say it for He'll send me. It'll be ten fifty four at night. I'm about to go to bed, and he just sends me <laughs> to piss me off, and I'm up for another hour because I'm just mad. Who yeah. is it? You know when people say like you get heated, like the expression, like I mean, you guys get heated, like when you get mad and it makes your body warm, and yeah. you're like you sitting there. And Blake fakes made me heated. There's yeah, some people he's, who make me mad. I I don't know if we'll get this up today or tomorrow, but I kind of want to just pick the games for tonight. Like, give me give me a uh, we'll we'll go through pick them. We'll do Bills Steelers first. Um, and tell take me why. The, go ahead, Lucas. Take the Steelers. Mike Tomlin's cooking. Nah, nah. I'm Jaylen going Warren. with the Bills at home. There's no way. Who's starting for uh, the Steelers tonight? I think it's Rudolph. I think Rudolph is Mason Rudolph in that temperature. No, <laughs> I remember when Mason Rudolph played like the. Oh, and 19 and one Detroit Lions in Pittsburgh in shitty weather. And Dog tied. fight. They tied. Dog There's bad. Josh Allen's going to find, I think it's going to be a low scoring game, like probably like a 20 to like nine game, but the Bills will be Ooh. in control the whole time. Nah, hey, it's going to be a high scoring game. I think uh, Bills maybe are gonna score, Buffalo. Bills going to score. Buffalo. Yeah, no, the Bills are going to score like 30 plus tonight. That's a fact. I don't know. I just don't think they're going to want. Booter, like, did you it, see the weather? Did you see the, did you see the field? today no Go look at the picture I, of the field it's like completely it's like a, it's a beautiful yeah day no I, there's really i'm not even worried about that i just think if buffalo gets a lead in that game do your they research jeff it, they could like who are they so then they play kansas city the next week right like you don't want to show all your so, cards yeah. against kansas city in buffalo too is it really yeah. that clear go look at it yeah, there's probably like, they've been posted pictures bills there's fans no have been up since 3 a.m shoveling the only bills thing mafia has been active <laughs> The only thing they Dog. didn't shovel, I saw a picture. I saw the the field is like super clear. The stands, there's like no seats. Like people are gonna be sitting on mounds of snow. Oh my like, gosh! Like it's super clear. There's just there's no seat. The seats are just full of. They like couldn't get the snow out of the seats. So this like actually, people are, hold on. Can I? I wonder if I can um put it up. Put it up. Let's see. Yeah, hey, let's you cook, producer Jeff. Yes, yeah, so it's rolls. 
producer he Hollywood. Share He's the TV might... now. Share right, your screen yeah, and get text messages pop up. Ooh. All right, can you see this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, on. no, nothing hold showing, on, bro. On. Hold on. Oh, hold on. oh, 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 this is cool. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, look how beautiful it is. It's sunny out. Look at like, that. That's going to be a cool game to dude, watch. What? How is yep. it this cool? Dude, that is insane. What the? Dude. Look, look, but look at all the snow in the stands. Like, where are people going to sit? It's like the I, stands hey, are just all snow. Hey, hey, you figure it out. Hey, look at hey. the upper deck. Is yeah. no snow in the upper deck. Bro, we're going to melt it with beer and piss. Bro, look at that. Where are they going <laughs> to sit? Where are they gonna sit? Oh, ah, right there. There you go. Right there. Oh, you get a, yeah, there's some. Oh, yeah, you get a nice little that, corner. There's a section that, open. That's insane. Okay, maybe. Hey, I was I was unfamiliar with your game. I, I'm going with Thank the Bills God. by a lot. Give Bills me, give me, dude. The city of Buffalo. That's all they have. They they <laughs> told the Bills fans like two days ago, we're gonna need your help, and the, the city showed out. They did. Shout yeah, out to they the, did. the shout out to the Buffalo so Bills fans. We're all Josh Allen. We're, we're all picking. You're, uh, you're a Bills fan in an alternate life, Booner. I, no, seriously, I am. I love that. If if I wasn't a Lions, a diehard Lions fan, I would. I love the Bills too. That's like my AFC team. Like I would love a Lions Bills Super Bowl. Actually, I don't know. I would. I would destroy Josh Allen. No, you would. You wouldn't do shit to Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah that's how that. I feel with the Bengals, though. With Joe I Burrell love. The, I love the Bills, but what's that? Yeah, cup especially, over especially there? with easy slander in them. We got uh, that is the Joe Burrow. You got to defend him even hey, harder. Booner. Hey, yeah. let's go. Thank you, bro. <laughs> hey, so we're all rocking Bills, right? That's Bills, that's our for pick. sure. Yeah. Uh, I might take Bills uh, first then as well. What about Eagles Bucks? I mean, Luke, you already said Bucks. That's who you're feeling. Yeah, I went with Bucks. Bucks this morning, too. I'm going Bucks, Yeah, too. I think I think it's going to be one of those games where Philly's going to start out hot, hot. They're going to have like a good game plan because they know no A.J. Brown, and then I just think it's going to fall apart for them. See, I think, it's, I think it's the opposite. I, I think the Bucs, right off the bat, start taking the lead by like a score think or two. So? And that, and I think the Bucs go up panic. like 14 to three, and then yeah. they're at home. And it's, you you know, like Tampa, as much as like we hate Tampa, we were in Tampa. Like, they do have a nice crowd. Like, especially in the playoffs, they're going to be buzzing a little bit. If they get up to a 14 to three, it's it's over for the Eagles. And, and by the way, too, I want to throw this out. I want to throw this out there, too. The, the Eagles have had so many injuries and so many issues with players. There's yeah. no chance Nick Sirianni should be fired. He's one of the best coaches. No. Like, I, I, I'm a, yeah, I don't get that. You know what else is crazy it's to me? Philly's, that, uh, Philly's fans Philly's are ruthless, bro. What's Philly's Ryan OC's Johnson. name? Brian Johnson. The fact yeah. he's getting looked at head coaching jobs is insane. Absurd. Is insane. Absurd. I was looking at it, and it's like, I'm sure a lot of people already know this, but it's like when you, like, obviously in the NFL today, pre-snap and just motions in general – are so important for a quarterback to read a defense, and Jalen Hurts is struggling, and they're dead last in it. So it's like, what is he doing? There's no like he's just relying on Jalen Hurts trying to make plays off a hurt knee. Yeah, it's backyard football. It's ass. Like it, it's, it's so good. ass. And, and they they miss Shane Steichen so bad. And, and even and Jonathan and Gannon, they, they miss Jonathan Gannon too. I was just yeah. gonna say, hey. Pew, pew. <laughs> And that's the argument I made, and this is why I'm glad me and you are in lockstep with this thing, Lucas, about Aaron Glenn because. Even offensive coaches miss assistance. So when tr people try to tell me, like, oh, defensive coach, he needs a great OC, like Bobby Slowick with the with the Texans, every coach will miss a great OC. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're Aaron Glenn, D'Amico Ryans, or, or Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni's an offensive mind. That's what he was. And he misses Shane Steichen. So it's the yeah. whole thing with, like, Dan Campbell and Ben Johnson. Like, you're going to miss any great coordinator. That's just how that works. Just how yeah, that works. You, you can find a new one. You're good. Got to find a new so one. Why, Got to replace. Why I'm so on board for your boy Tanner Hangstrom is the fact that I think when you pull from a different organization or pull like, like if you keep it inside everything, pause, then I think it works out way better. Because like go learning. Already, and they know the system. He's been there for two years. He's been learning under Ben Johnson as well. Yeah. Like, Dude, everything Ben knows. He has sure the Tanner same. Knows. He has the same titles Ben had when he got promoted. It's the same grooming process. It's the same thing. Like tight end coach, the passing game coordinator. To OC, like that's what yeah. he's he's gonna be. I, but I'm with you, Lucas. I, that's well, what the 49ers do. The 49ers that's probably do the that. root of it because Dan Dan obviously a tight end guy, so he probably that the system is probably in a way not completely around the tight end, but very tight end like yeah oriented. They do. Like you need like that offense, so it's like when you start out there, you figure out where the core of the offense is coming from. Hey, do, do you know what the Detroit Lions? So I was just thinking this, like 
it's the same thing in San Fran. Like when they lose their OCs or like LA, the Rams, like when they lose their OCs, like their offense continues to be. And I know Sh- Sean, yeah. McVay, like I know Shanahan, but the thing is, is like Dan might not be a guy like that can be like one of them. But if you have the player, like if you have the players that Brad Holmes is bringing in and like no matter what, if you have the players and Dan, you still have Dan Campbell, Tanner's going to be just fine. Like I'm, yeah. I'm I, a lot of people might say, oh, well, we have to see. Like, no, I think. Tanner's like whoever it is, even if it's Scotty, whoever it is, like they're gonna have the weapons, and they Dan like as much as we, no one wants to give. I got in this argument with Easy. It's like he doesn't want to give Dan any credit, but it's like, hey, Dan yeah. made the move to move on. Dan as well for half of that that time, he called plays as well during that turnaround <laughs> when when that change got made, and then he's the one that helped Ben Johnson get into that role and get comfortable. And like, but, yeah, Ben does have that brain, the brains. Dan still does that, and um, if Tanner has the brains. Dan can do the same thing that he did with Ben with Tanner. That so it's is, like that argument of, hey, it's mm-hmm. not, it wasn't on Dan. No, like Dan is the one that did that. Like you having the coach and the players and the weapons and the cult, Dan's the one that does that at the yeah, end of the day. Yes, but here's my counter argument. Lucas, you, you you can shred either of us or agree with one of us. This is what I would say back to you. Shred hey, you. Uh, no, you're not. I'll tell you why. Okay. E- anyone you bring in is a downgrade from Ben Johnson. Can we agree there? Like anyone yes. you bring in, yeah, I was just great. gonna say that. Like, I think Tanner could instantly, I'm not yes, gonna be instantly, gonna, yes, gonna be bad, but yeah, I don't it's just it's not, it's not fair to be like, oh, Ben Johnson 2.0. Yeah, well, the, there you go. him being a new OC is instantly gonna be a downgrade because but he's never been an OC. Now, that, that doesn't mean his ceiling, he can't get to where Ben is, does not mean and that. This is, this is why I agree with your point, Gunnar, because while they do that, they're gonna be acquiring more offensive talent, yes, you know what I mean? They're gonna be 100%. surrounding him more, and if. Say what you want. I know we all love Jared right now, but if he's developing right now with Hendon and then when they decide to move off of Jared Goff at some point, Won't well, now happen. you got the guy that's been developing with Hendon the whole time. Yeah. Well, that's we'll, – we'll watch uh, – well, not the same, but that's what they did with Brian Johnson because Brian Johnson and Jalen Hurts are like, they're besties and how that's worked out. <laughs> hey, but uh, – but, but hold on. To your point, Tanner could get to Ben's level. I, like, think yeah. about Look at yeah. in all those OCs that Here's came out and got know. head coaching jobs. Like they consistently but, got look, up guys, to that this, level. This is the point you you mentioned with Dan Campbell. This is my problem though. We what we seen Dan call plays. It ain't this. I, I'll tell, it ain't this. At all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like I don't even act like. Well, he called play. I get that he, he did. did not, I agree. But it ain't but this. Did he? Not, like I said, you you. you I think you shut your. I think you shut your headphones off, like during like a little part of my my talk there. I think I maybe I cut <laughs> out. I don't know if I cut out. Dan knows how to put him in a position to be successful. If no, 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 listen, stop real quick. I might have cut out again. I don't know if I did. If <laughs> if Tanner has the brains like Ben Johnson, which he could, he can have. If Dan sure. puts him in that position, I believe he has. And and that's your that's your guy. That's your guy. It is. If Tanner has those brains. Dan can help elevate him to that Ben Johnson level. He did it with Ben. You, if you have the brains to do it, Dan has proven that he could take an OC and, and put him in the position. Brad yeah, Holmes yeah. can too because yeah. he has the play. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, but they're boom, not boom. robots. Boom, boom. They're not robots. Boom, yes. Boom. Yes. Boom. They're, not, they're human I'm beings. This way. Yeah, but, but Booner, can we agree? I'm just saying. I hope I didn't cut also, out there. Can we agree that Ben Johnson also just kind of fell out of the sky? Like, let's not act like Dan was like, I want. Like, Ben. He <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Oh, Time out. Whoa. Ben was already here. It's, hey, you had to win. No. Anthony okay. was your OC. Yeah. And he was. Guess what? Dan could have went and got anyone else on the I offensive understand. staff and made him You're OC, acting like he said, you, oh, you, this you, Ben guy is really good. Let me bring him in. Hold on, Booner. You're acting like Dan un- uh, opened up the battery pack. Boop, 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 sh- go call plays. No, Ben's that great. He's just great. He, and Dan, he is and Dan's lucky to have Ben. Dude, Dan I'm not taking anything ben. away from Ben. Ben Johnson is one of the best in the league right now. What I'm saying, though, is Dan did pick him. Like, ben, like yes. it was who someone had to pick him and elevate him, right? And someone had to help him through to yes, become an OC. elevate him and give him that? the opportunity, yes. But let's not act like, you know, Ben's calling plays and Dan's like, hey, call this play. Hey, no, he's not. But play. Like, it's helped. Ben. That's as your, ben. as a leader of that football team, they, throughout they, the two Booner, years, he Booner has been Booner helping just, him look, elevate Booner, and helping him Booner get better always, and better and better. Booner always will be the dang, and not in a bad way in this situation, but you always lean heavy Dan Campbell, and that's okay. I love Ben Johnson. But, so, so they Shout both deserve ben. credit. But Booner's always going to give that extra credit wh- where it should or shouldn't be towards Dan Campbell. 
You, so we're, we're just saying, it. so Lucas, what Jeff is just saying right credit. here. I, I get, what Jeff is saying is correct and what you are saying cor is correct. Except though, what Jeff is saying is that Dan didn't do anything to help elevate his It's not what he, no, no, no. I, oh, maybe I cut out. Hey, hey, you know, hey, hey, maybe I'll send you new headphones, Booter. Yeah, no, no, my bad, my bad, Jeff, let you me, cut out here. Um, no, hold on, what did you let say? Let me tell there? you something. So yeah, what I'm sorry. saying is, and Lucas understands what I'm saying. This is, I'm not saying Dan did nothing. Dan empowers his coaches. He allows them to, to call plays, and, and again, he empowers them. And I'm sure he, he works with them through uh, throughout the week with game planning. This is what I want to do. This is what we like to do. Dude. All that stuff's great. But when the game starts, who's calling plays? Who's, who's, oh, yeah, who's I agree. creating plays? It's Ben It's Ben Johnson. Yeah, I'm, sure, like, I'm, sure Dan, I'm sure Dan has a couple drawn-up plays in there, too. Hey, you, every C grows a different tree. He, one guy was a pass game up, What was that? The Drake after? Now, now, I say that. Yes. To, <laughs> hey, I, I say that to say this, boys. I think Dan, without Ben, it's still an offense. It's it's a pitcher. He he already knows the pitcher and how he wants it to look. Don't so say I think it. the offense, if they give Tanner a chance, maybe it looks somewhat similar, but you're not going to have the same play caller. That's all I'm saying. Like no, Ben. No, ben yeah, because it, it's going to be a different. Per, it's going to be a different person, a play caller. Yeah, I'm not saying like Ben it's leaves everything falls apart it's over like no you know. it's it's gonna be a transition for sure yeah like, it's gonna absolutely. be completely different you're gonna you know the offense may stall out a little bit to start the season who knows but you know, have you guys talked about not. the Packers yet uh no Are hey how guys... about Matt LaFleur huh let's, SPSU let's have alum a serious, let's have a serious conversation about yes I'm scared Green of the Packers, Packers. Going forward. But as far as like going forward do you think Very them scary. and the Lions are going to be consistently fighting for the North Neil, mm -hmm. I had this uh, conversation right, with Neil. Yeah. He thinks it's the Bears. I said, nope, I think it's the Packers. Jordan Love. The Bears. Wait, wait, wait. You two sit here real quick. Wait, time out, time out. Do you guys remember this summer? We did this show called, like, uh, Jeff and Gentry or something early in the summer, and you guys were like, watch out for Justin Fields, MVP. And I said, watch out for Jordan Love. He's I, be quiet on him. I never you, said you, watch you, out for you, Justin you did, you did give your credit to – you know, I'll give you that. Remember me and Lucas actually it was actually me and Lucas because he yeah, was because I, I was like there's a reason they did extend him and me and Lucas went back and forth and I was like I think well, he's gonna be better. I, than I, I thought the, the my Packers thing would be was second too. in the division. I thought they'd be second. Same here. I had I had them too. Yeah. My whole thing was saying like the contract where where I was going from is like we that we can't act like this dude is just gonna be coming and just blank check good because the contract they have like if you know you have a guy you're not resigning for two years 22 million dollars whatever it was that's right, why yeah. i was like ah but i was wrong i was wrong but yeah i, I, I do i do agree with the contract thing like that that was a con like kind of approve it do you guys remember like seven or eight weeks into the season when they struggled a little bit that the report came out to where it was like he has like a couple weeks to prove himself and then like, yeah matt Lafleur called him off. out and then he turned yeah. the fuck up he started turning around and like the whole team I, just they're, they're scary that team I think, he's scary I, I think Jordan Love is 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 good. Like your first year starting in the league, you throw thirty plus TD passes. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of those passes he was making yesterday too. Like he, it was he, always just a beautiful fucking good. ball too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's great. You know, scares me for the Packers and the he, most. He's mobile. Dontavian Wicks, that motherfucker. That's a Klotz Look, guy. I should have known, yeah, yeah, dude. That, <laughs> that I should have known dude, better. Klotz. He's he's gonna emerge one day as a wide receiver one. He's good. Maybe, maybe Jaden Reed. Maybe Jaden Reed. I like Jaden Reed more. Wicks, Jaden Reed's the Wicks dog, is dude. the crispiest one out of all of them, I think. That, got that, that sounds, like, sounds like a blood clots guy. Dude, he's, blood he's clots, bro. Georgia Bulldog. <laughs> yeah, he's out of Georgia? He? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a dog then for sure. I don't say it. And boys, he's like, once he put, like, he's like probably like 6'3". Once he puts on, like. 15 pounds, bro, he's going to be a problem because his his route running's gross. Did you see what he did on Gilmore? And he did it Rock the week up. before. I forget who they were playing. The Bears. Can we get a, can we get a Klotz breakdown? Can we get a Klotz huh? breakdown one day this week? Uh, yeah. We'll Please drop it. it. We'll drop it on here. Thank we you. can put it. We can put it on crunch time. <laughs> can I give you? Can I give you one player a week going forward? And I just want a, a, a breakdown from the one. I'll player. pick the player. No, I'll, 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 I want. I want it like a booner yeah, player what are you of the giving week. Out homework assignments? What the hell? Are you no, doing no, it's gonna be like the booner player of the week. I want like. Lucas and, but can I? Can I grade? Guy. Like, if I don't, if I don't like him, can I critique him? Oh yeah, this is the thing. Is this is like this is like a uh, like um. Let's get booner better with unknown players. I'm gonna go pick random players I don't know. I want you to to critique him one a week. That's actually, and we learn about some guys we don't know about. That's actually, 
It's a good point. Hey, can we Luder. start with Riley Moss? Whatever. No, we're, we're, got Dontavious in. Wicks or whatever. Dontavian. Dontavian Wicks. Dontavious Wicks. Hey, I like whatever he's saying. Whatever that is. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I'm about to look. Probably are. Booner's always right. <laughs> I will say though, the Packers, I think, are going to be the team that probably. No, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Is it? You're right. Yep. All right. All right I think yeah, the Packers could me. could could make some noise, but if the Bears actually are smart and they trade Justin Fields and draft Caleb Williams, I'll move to the Bears immediately. I, I, did you hear I what he said? Where, I know I he doesn't want report. to go to the Bears. I know he doesn't. I just want saw to go a report. Him. I don't know if it was confirmed yet, but it was saying. Um, I can't remember the team. They could trade the team that was in the eighth spot is willing to trade to get Justin Fields. So they could get Caleb, the three That's the pick, Falcons. And then the yeah, it might have been the Falcons. I knew it was a oh. team in red, but I don't really remember it. So it might be the Falcons. I think it is the so Falcons. they could have the one they could have three top ten picks. Wow. Hey, you know what's crazy though? The fact that Eberflus, like, I, I get he had a good second half of the year, but, like, if you're trying to have a competent core organization, you you can't, like, he's going to get fired next. Like, all that's going to happen is they're going to draft a quarterback or, or, and he's just going to end up getting fired. Flus from from the – Watch the, the Toledo native play. From the Toledo area. Toledo. I'm just being honest. Like, he's going to end up getting fired with an E. Hey, you're a Harbaugh guy, aren't you? You're a Harbaugh guy, aren't you? He won't go to Chicago. You know, you're Harbaugh. You like Harbaugh, though, right? Both of them? What about him? Toledo natives. Yeah, he's Toledo 10 natives. times better than Matt Eberflus. Are they really? Dude, you know what? Yeah. No, What's Jeff, up? you want to know something crazy? Like, every person we talk about, Lucas is just like, oh, 419. Like, dude, just because they drove through the town doesn't mean that they're from there. <laughs> no, like, what look, are we doing look here? Jim Har- oh. what, look, Booner, go, go and look up where was Jim Harbaugh born right now. Born doesn't count. His family could have been there for like a four one nine. They're four one nine cut. Just because you get born there doesn't mean you're from there. Like, where did he grow up? Yeah, is he is he from the Toledo Ohio, streets or is he Ohio from the boy. Toledo? Okay, All right. born, born in, Toledo. in Toledo. Yep. He's not Toledo, dude. He went to Perrysburg High School. That's not Toledo, dude. That's <laughs> literally fifteen minutes away from me. Fifteen minutes outside of Toledo. That's like you that's like being like Perry, I'm, that's, Perrysburg is like the um that's like me saying right, I'm from Toledo, Detroit and I'm there's, an hour there's out. Toledo, there's Toledo, yeah. there's the blue collar shithole Rossford, which is where I was like grew up, and then so there's, there's two, Perrysburg. So basically, what you're saying is there a full city between Toledo and no, where but he he's grew definitely up. A Toledo native. <laughs> yeah. If he, he, if he was hey, listen, if he was playing that Perrysburg, he was going up against Matt Eberflus at Whitmer. Shout out Perrysburg. Yeah. I know, I know those Perrysburg. are some that was, those two are minutes from my house. Hey, those Whitman are some wars, Panthers. fellas. <laughs> those are some there's so many Hunter. Toledo people, bro. I don't get how there's so many Toledo people. Like every time we have a conversation about football, Lucas is like four one nine. I'm like, dude, how? Hey, he's, he's proud. Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson. Four one nine. That's no how. Hey, Rod. Hey, Rod Moore. Russ Yeast. Russ Yeast for the Rams. Back up they, wait, we're, Rod Moore, Rod Moore oh from gosh. Michigan. We're, what he's not from Toledo, but he's from Ohio, ain't he? Somewhere in hey, Ohio. Hey, time out real quick. Rod Moore, guess what? Just what? announced he's returning next year for his senior year. Okay. We maybe maybe we got some guy. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be under Coach Moore, though. Let's not have this Michigan Stroll conversation, more. man. I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, no, we'll, bad. Hey, we'll end it. We'll end it here, boys. It's been fun. All right, it's been fun. Look Shout at that. We got boys, the ball knower making a uh making an appearance as well. If you guys want more content and you subscribe, it's that simple. You can find us on all podcast platforms, Crunch Time with Jeff I. Freddy and Booter. Michael Gentry, he is, he's been dead the last week, but he's coming back from the grave. I he'll hope he's alive, dude. I haven't seen him in like well, uh, eight days, dude. Yeah, he, he, he put their RIPs in the chat if you're still listening. So uh, I until next episode, we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be breaking down, hopefully, the NFC Championship appearance. Until then, we'll catch you guys.